Visiting with Hewell Hauser is made possible through a generous grant from the Ralph M. Parsons Foundation. Well, hello everybody, I'm Hewell Hauser, and of course this little device needs no introduction. It's an iPhone. This is what people take photographs with. You can instantly put it on Facebook or send it to friends or relatives all over the world. This is the present. This is what people use today. But we are not here to talk about today, and we are not here to talk about people who take these photographs for the fun of it. We are here to talk about the past, the present, and the future, and more specifically about individuals who have taken and continue to take photographs for a living. They are professional photographers. We are here on the Queen Mary for the 75th anniversary of the Press Photographers Association of Greater Los Angeles. And here, everybody who's a professional press photographer, put your hands up. They're all professionals right here. <laughs> Happy professionals, too. But let's go back in time a little bit more because here's another professional right over here. He's holding up his camera. I, I'm with your picture, Hugh. Can oh, I? I'm sorry. Okay, this, it, just don't blink, though, no, please. We only get one shot at a time. That's it. Hold it right there. Smiling. Smiling. Oh! <laughs> you really took one. Just one more. <laughs> there's, there's another one? Well, we only shot two shots at a time. Wow, Once your name, know. sir, is? Gary Watson. Okay, you're one of the famous Watson brothers of yeah, Hollywood. Yeah, yeah, we've been in movies and been hit and run on stories, you know, one of but those things. you've been a professional press photographer for how many years now? 45. And when you started out, this is what you used. Explain this to everybody. Well, this is a speed yeah, graphic. Later, when I started with an older one, in high school, shooting all the pictures during the war in high school, because they had no film or cameras in. And then we got to moving uh, from high school into doing Acme News pictures, which we transmitted film pictures over the wire to all the states. And that's where I got my start there. And then I made pictures of accidents, wrecks, and everything else. Were these the kind of cameras that professional photographers, news photographers, the kind of, and this would the have kind of, used? The police recognized this camera right away because it was something that nobody else could handle, could shoot, wow. could work with. And then you had that processing done, and there was no place except the newspapers to have it processed. So these were the cameras that took the pictures, what, in the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s? I started 48 through the 50s and 60s. And they all had these bulbs that were so bright when they flashed. They had you to be. saw one. They had to be. And when you were out taking photographs, you were taking a lot of photographs, one mm -hmm. right after the other. So you had to be putting in and taking out bulbs all the time. Yeah, we only carried 10 or 12 holders. That's 24 shots. And we, I was shooting uh, Vice President Humphrey. He wasn't a vice president. He was just a but a center, I guess, and he blinked. And we hated that because we had to change the holder, see? Mm -hmm. We had to pull it out and turn it over. Look at do this, all this, this is stuff. very complicated. And recock the shutter, put the bulb in, draw the slide, turn it over, stand it up and For shoot. For each picture? Yeah, each picture. And if he blinked, we, that meant we didn't have a picture to shoot maybe of a train wreck or something. But you really didn't even know that he blinked for oh, sure. Yeah, 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 you could tell live whether he was blinking or not. Watch the eyes. The eyes have it, and if they if they blink, you're oh, don't do that again, please. <laughs> All right, now listen. We're standing in front of their exhibits of these wonderful award-winning photographs all over the walls here. This is one of yours. Now I don't know whether this changed the course of history, but it sure made a lot of people smile, didn't it? it honestly, I made it as a fluke. I drove by it, and I said, "Gee, that's funny." The guy was squirting water on. See the hose. And I came back, and by the time I came back, he was brushing. He didn't know I was there. And he started, I started laughing. I could hold the camera, and he said, what are you laughing at? So I was laughing at him. I said, come down here and look. And then he saw, and I took it back, and I said, well, I want to send it to Life. My brother didn't think it was funny. He said, you sent it to Life magazine? Yeah. I, said, I knew it would make the miscellany page anyway, I thought. And they printed it, and you got rich off that photograph. Well, yes, $200. <laughs> But this picture was bought, and they put it in the Best of Life and four or five other books, but it went all over the world. I found out that I got magazines from 
Poland, Czechoslovakia, because life, you know, was very big over there and they wanted it. The last one I sent to was Japan. How many photographs do you figure you've taken in your career? How many thousands? Or tens of thousands? Maybe, maybe 20,000. 20,000? Yeah. They yeah. haven't all been winners like this no, one. No, no, I've missed a lot too. But they've been pictures, photographs of life in Los Angeles. The yeah. good, the bad, the ugly, the funny, the sad, the tragic. Yeah, that's the sad part, the tragic. You, uh, I, the first tragic one I photographed was two little kids were missing. They couldn't find them. And they found them on a hot day. They got in the refrigerator and closed the door. And of course, they went in here. They had no handle on the inside. So I'm making the picture, and all the people were yelling at me because these, these were their neighbors, you know? And uh, I said, shut up. And the sheriff grabbed my arm, pulled me back. I said, listen. I'm making a picture that will appear and make everybody take the handles off their doors yeah. so they don't have this happen again. Yeah. And then I had to make a picture of the two little kids. That's why we always did that. You have to be a diplomat, don't you? Because you're interacting with people yeah. when they're having good times and bad. Yeah, there's movie stars don't like you, and then there's kids that love you. You were early paparazzi. Yeah, kind of a dirty word. <laughs> I don't know what it means, but they sure did. Uh, they sure did give us a name. Well, I tell you what, it's sure been nice visiting with you. Thank you you let me hold this a minute ago. This is amazing. This a is a heavy, heavy camera. We had a heavy case too. You had twelve holders and bulbs. You know, you didn't. You couldn't run out. Compared to this. Oh, let's see. Let's compare it. <laughs> Here, look at that little baby thing. <laughs> I'd rather shoot this than that, I'll tell you. I don't yeah. know. I don't even have one of those. But Do you still use this? No, I gave it to my son. He he keeps it out there. Yeah, keeps but you could. There. Damn right. I mean it. He made a picture of my 60th birthday, and I was surprised it worked, and it worked. <laughs> If I had filmed it, it worked right now. I just shot your, well, I didn't take your picture. Oh, you just, that was just to flash the bulb. That's not really a picture. I was looking Nobody forward to. Nobody can develop the 4 by 5 film anymore. Who can? <laughs> I don't know whether the studio still use it or not, but that, you walk down any scene, the, the press were there with a the camera, but the police recognized. We didn't have badges in. That was the thing that gave us the camera it. itself. Because nobody else had one. They did not have to work it. They had no place to process it. Well, you're part of Hollywood and Los Angeles history, but our adventure has just started because we got some more press photographers to talk with right now. President Kennedy at the beach in Santa Monica, and here to tell us about it. Introduce yourself to everybody, sir. Well, Bill Beebe. I worked for the LA Times at the time. And uh, I, had a, I was one of three photographers who had been assigned to cover the president. Uh, I was sort of stuck at the front door in case uh, Marilyn showed up, but uh, <laughs> of course she didn't. And, Not uh, in the front door, at least. No, no. <laughs> and we had one next door on a, on a balcony overlooking the, the backyard of uh, Lawford's home. And, uh, so he stayed at Peter Lawford's house. Yes, it's Peter Lawford's house right. on the beach. Right. There was a vacant lot next to the Lawford's home at the time. And I knew all the lifeguards and most of the cops and so forth that were there. And, and they'd promised to give me a high sign if he went out the back gate. And uh, sure enough, he went out. And of course, by the time I got out there, why, he was already in the water. And uh, he could swim like a fish. This guy is really a strong swimmer. And he swam out right near the lifeguard boat, the patrol boat, who had been federal agents and so forth, the cops on board. And he swam up the beach about 100 yards and turned around and swam back. And while he was doing this, the word had spread up and down the beach that the president was in the water. Well, that's by the where all the women that, came from. Oh, boy, did they. So uh, as he started to come out, why, they all went rushing in after him. And I thought, that's the only way to get it. And I took my shoots my uh, slippers off and hand them to a, another reporter, another paper, and um, I went in and closed it all. And of course, in those days, we wore a coat and a jacket, a tie, and slacks. So this was actually made in the water. You oh, were yeah. standing uh, in yeah, the I water. Yeah, I waited out in the water, yeah, with them. And do you remember that moment, like Very it's well. frozen in time? Like it was yesterday. 
Really? Mm -hmm. Was you think he was a little embarrassed by all of this because he thought he was going to be swimming alone out there? No, I don't think Kennedy had a very few moments of embarrassment. He, uh, he was a friend of the people, and uh, I think he used this to what advantage? Uh, I don't really know, I'm just guessing. But within an hour after that picture was taken, his um, PR person, it slips my mind at the moment who was, he called the Times and asked them to kill the picture. I don't know what the Times said, but they didn't. <laughs> Did you have any idea when you took this photograph that it was going to become this famous and this well known? Because this is one of the great Kennedy pictures from Los Angeles. Well, I, I knew I had a good picture, but you don't really know what it is until you see it. And um, uh, that. Uh, they nominated me for a Pulitzer Prize with it. I didn't win it, but it's in the best 50 years of life and time and and Lord knows how many publications. Yeah. So, uh, but and out of all the photographs you've taken in your life, which have to be, again, thousands of photographs, many. this is one that probably was least expected and most widely distributed. Yes, you could, that's without question. So you never know. No, that's true. But... Uh, uh, when you see the actual print or, or in the paper, re you recognize right away that, that it will probably be uh, go down in history as somewhere for, for some prize. It, uh, it meant a lot to me. And, uh, well, congratulations, you. sir. You're not happy with the quality of the print, but it's, uh, it sure brings back a lot of memories. Yes, like you say, you can remember it yes. exactly that yes, moment. Yes, very much so. Another photograph of another Kennedy, Robert Kennedy, here in Los Angeles, probably the most famous photograph ever taken of Robert Kennedy in one of the worst situations. I mean, this was, this said it all right here, and you were there yeah. to take this photograph. Your name, sir, is? Boris Yarrow. Tell us this story, because this must be amazing. Yeah, I had gotten off work from the Times, I uh, went home, had an upset stomach, took some Pepto-Bismol, watched him television, and see that he's winning the primary. So I decided to go get a picture for me. Now, as you look around all the pictures here, a lot of them made in this era, they were using flash. Mm -hmm. And I wanted a natural light picture. So I went into the ambassador with a camera, but no flash. And in the process, uh, in the uh, ambassador ballroom, I'd been out in front, I made a couple of pictures out there. I went back to the kitchen area because that's the way he came in and was sitting with a friend of mine, Dick Drew, who now works for AP New York. And I put my camera up to my eye and Dick says, hey Boris, you missed him. Sure enough, he'd gone that way. So I jumped off and I'm going like this off to the right. Kennedy's going like so to the, to the left. And I'm starting to bring my camera up and <laughs> shot started forts over the crowd parts like uh, the Red Sea, I guess. And there's nothing between Kennedy and Sirhan except Sirhan's gun. And he finished him off, ran out of bullets, and the uh, maitre d' and a couple other people jumped Sirhan. Could and you believe that you were witnessing something like no, this? No, because the first thought that went through my mind is, my God, not again. And, and what made you bring out your camera and take this photograph? I had it on. I had the camera draped around my neck. I was there to make his picture, not like that. Right. And, and uh, so it, your, your instincts said to photograph this. Take it in. Yeah, I did. I, in the process, I made about three frames here, and some lady grabbed a hold of my coat sleeve. And she said, don't take pictures. I'm a photographer. I'm not taking pictures. And I said, God damn it, lady, this is history, and pulled away from her. And by that time, uh, he was down on the deck, and the busboy was coming over to him. And I made three or four more frames. Because this is so poignant because of the busboy. He's stunned. And the whole, the whole look there. Yeah, he's stunned. Uh, were you thinking composition? Were you thinking history? Were you thinking at all? thinking, dear God, let me get a, a solid picture in focus. It's, this is soft. 
It's a, a very slow shutter speed. Did it's, you immediately send this out on the wire services? <laughs> well, first I had to extricate myself from the mess. My first thought was get out of here before the cops show up and, and tie us up, um, you know, for interviews. And I ran out of the ambassador and then, wait, I got to call the office. I found a payphone right at the exit to the parking lot, uh, or to the, yeah, in the hotel from the parking lot. And I went over and I called the city desk and talked to Bill Thomas, the city editor. And I said, Kennedy's been shot. He says, we know. He's, we already got shot in the leg. And I said, no, I saw blood coming out of his ear. He said, get in here. So I got my car the, uh, parked in the street, actually, right behind the ambassador. And I don't remember red light between the ambassador and the Times building. And then they took it from there. And there it was. The, Do you uh, remember that moment? Very much so. You remember the way you were feeling, or did your professionalism take over? The, Do you remember? The, yeah, I went, in, I, went in, I went in to kick gear, but uh, to do it because it's like an accident or a fire, something blown up in front of you. You got to do what you got to do. Uh, I didn't think of it that way. It was, oh my God, and do it, get it done. Wow. And here, all these years later, this <laughs> is the picture that's up on the wall, it's one of them. representative of your work. Well, is there? I wish it wasn't. I think he'd have made a great president. Another photograph, uh, another tragedy. And I remember this picture from the early 70s because this was widely distributed. You took this photograph. Your name, sir, is? Nick Wood. Okay, this was obviously made in South Vietnam after some napalm. This is all napalm back the, here. The, the, the napalm erupted in June 8, 1972. Do you remember taking this photograph? Yeah, I remember like uh, 39 years ago when I'm there early morning. And I covered a story for AP with a uh, ton of media there, ABC, NBC, everyone there. Mm -hmm. Then uh, we, sh we shot, you know, like North Vietnamese and uh, Sharp and me heavy fighting that morning. Mm -hmm. And I shot a lot of pictures. We don't know that they dropped napalm. I tried to leave in the, the village. Then almost like noon, I saw not air dry. I looked my camera I put my long lens. I saw four bombs coming down. That's a four napalm. Napalm bombs. Four, four napalm co coming down, explosion. And I saw people running in the village, like children uh, after that. And the grandmother, mother carried leave. Baby, he died in her arm. And I took a picture and I looked at black smoke. I saw the girl with her arm like that running. I said, this girl right him, him here. folk, she running. I said, oh my God, why she running out clothes? Then I keep running, I took a lot of whole camera, I keep shot her picture. Then she passed with my camera, I saw her skin already come up, I think she died. Then I... So you haven't kept up, you haven't tried to find this young lady? Yeah, after I took her picture, I don't want she die because I want to help her. I lied down my camera on Highway 1 and I put the water on her body. Then that's why I picked her up to my car from there to the uh, hospital. I want to share her life. Mm -hmm. Do you remember this moment again? Is this one of these moments that's frozen in time? Yeah, I remember that everything happened that day, you know, like United 1972, like uh, almost like 12 o'clock in the afternoon in uh, Saigon time. And but you remember this moment when yeah. these, because I can almost hear the sounds too. It must have been lots of screaming. Lots of noise from the bombs. Every time I look at a picture, I, always, I remember, you know, like almost almost 40 years now, I hear like girl screaming, the sound, air dry, everything. Keep remembered. Many years. Well, this photograph, as much as any photograph that was ever made during the war, shows the horror true. of war. Any war, either picture of Iraq, Afghanistan, today, you talk about war in Vietnam, they still show the picture. Mm -hmm. This picture this right picture here. This picture all life, for like my life, I, you know. Did you know that you were going to win an award with this picture, or did you even think of that sort After of thing? After I took the picture, the AP told me the story right away. She said, Nikki, you will win Buddha Pride, this, this picture. They told me right away. They said, this picture will win the photo. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Because it says it. Yeah. It's, it's a true. very powerful Found photo. Found picture. In a way, you must be very proud of this photograph, even though it's one of tragedy. You know that this photograph has affected true. millions yeah. of people over yeah, the years. That's just true. Then, uh, you know, when I see photo, I really didn't want to help this girl, have her family right away. If I leave there, she will die. 
you know, eat my job for top for four years. Like I, w- I, I don't want to hurry, get out of my picture right away. I want to need help treating her. Mm-hmm. So you photographed her and then and she... And bring her to the hospital, say her lie there. Then she fell down. Yeah, then I pick her up, I take her to my, to my car to a uh, small local hospital. Did you take her to the hospital? Yeah, and that's why I ring the hospital before I go back to the uh, AP office do all my So family. you did get involved I in involved a personal that way. I involved her lie. That's why she always called me today. She keep calling, thank you, Uncle Nick, share my lie. So she is still alive? She's still alive. She lived in Toronto, Canada. I talked to her last week. And She's living in Toronto. Toronto, Canada. Her name is? Kim, Kim Fu. This, in a way, mm-hmm. is a powerful photograph as well to see the two of you reunited again mm-hmm. after yeah. this so many years ago. Yeah, thank you so much. This part of the exhibit is called Presidents and Politics, and there's no better press photographer than, David, introduce yourself to everybody. David Kennerly, I'm a photographer. You know your presidents. You've been photographing presidents since? Abraham Lincoln. No, really, <laughs> when did you start? <laughs> uh, Richard Nixon. Okay, so every president from Nixon forward, including Obama, you have photographed. That's correct. You, had, you asked me a question before the camera came on about who was the first president photographed. And I said it had to be a little before Lincoln, but I didn't know for sure. And your answer was? John Quincy Adams. That is amazing. So not when he was president, but almost right before he died, uh, there was a photograph taken of John Quincy Adams. Uh, in 1838, and there are only five presidents who were never photographed, which is really stunning to me. I don't think anybody really thinks of it that way. They weren't photographed when they were president, but they were photographed before they died. And oh, only five were never photographed. Correct. Wow, let's talk about more recent history because you were the official photographer for President Ford and his family, weren't you? That's right. After Nixon resigned, uh, President Ford asked me to be the White House photographer. And that must have given you incredible stories and memories to spend those years that close with the Ford family. None of which I can tell. I understand. I'm not going to ask you though. I understand that. It's, it is because you were photographing even the most private of moments. You were given total access to the family. I think you could safely say that uh, Gerald Ford had a scandal-free administration. But I was in every top secret meeting. I was given full access upstairs, downstairs at the White House. It, it was the equivalent of being the uh, fox in the chicken coop for a photographer. It was fabulous. Have you remained friends with the Ford family? With Uh, Mrs. Ford? With the children? Yes, I've been uh, still very friendly and um, when President Ford passed on, uh, the family had asked me to be the official photographer for the funeral, which was a very sad uh, occasion. It's very fitting that you be the official photographer. It was and it was uh, a real celebration of a great life. And I think for that, uh, I was glad to be there. You have so many photographs here of all of the presidents, and yet this one stands out. This was literally as President Nixon was leaving the White House after he had resigned the presidency. Uh, August 9th, 1974 was probably the darkest day in presidential history. It's the first time a president's ever resigned. And, um, and I was there on the photo stand with all the other photographers taking the pictures, but uh, um, the one thing I knew for sure was I was seeing an extraordinary moment in, in American history. Do you, I've asked everyone else, do you remember that exact moment as he was making <clears throat> that final gesture, salute, as he was getting on board the helicopter? Well, I, I was so, fixated on on not missing anything. I just kept shooting and shooting. It was really only later when I saw the film of him leaving how quick that wave was. It was just a flash of a second. And uh, that's why you don't see many pictures of it because uh, quite frankly, almost everybody missed that picture. Was it almost by chance, I hate to say this, but that you got this just because you were snapping every moment? It was pure skill. (laughs) 
I know, I was, I, I, I'm pretty lucky, but uh, you, you have to be there and you have to understand what's going on. And in this case, uh, I think I was lucky. It was the same when uh, Robert Kennedy here at the Ambassador Hotel gave that V sign. Mm -hmm. If you see the film later, uh, as I saw the film later on, he went like that. It was that fast. And then he went into the room where I didn't follow where you talked to Boris Yarrow, right. who was in there after he got shot. You know, these photographs that we've seen today, and we've just seen the, just a few, three or four or five photographs right. today. There are thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of, of photographs have been taken by press photographers, professionals over the years, and they continue to be taken. This is still a very honorable and necessary profession, isn't it? I think so. Uh, we're the eyes of humanity. We're the ones who get to go where other people can't, and, and we bring back the pictures that you really need to see. The good news, the bad news. Uh, unfortunately, you've seen some of the bad news here, but that's history. Yeah. Well, we started this by me pulling out, I guess it was yours, pull that thing out, oh, your my iPhone. iPhone. The I think, iPhone, do you use this now as a professional photographer? I do. Uh, I would not go on a big paying job with this. Yeah. But uh, quite frankly, and I'm going to put this on my Facebook page. Oh, <laughs> see, everybody's on Facebook. But, and, and you know, my youngest son is, is a, a true fan of yours. Well, so he's, uh, I'm going to send this to him. But my point being, everybody is taking photographs today. But it's still yes. important that your profession, the Press Photographers Association, remain as important as it's always been in taking the pictures that take photography one step beyond what we can all take with our iPhones. I agree, and I, I think uh, uh, it's not a dying profession. There were young people here today, students uh, who want to be photographers. Uh, it's about what you see from behind the camera uh, there are camera users and there are photographers. You've seen the best of some of, of, the, of photography today. Well, thank you very much thank for you. inviting me here. This has been an absolutely amazing experience for us this morning. This exhibit isn't going to be up very long, so by the time this program airs, it may or may not still even be up. But the important thing is for people to start noticing these photographs taken by professionals and appreciating the hard work and the professionalism and the good eye that goes into sharing, taking and sharing these photographs, these moments of history with all of us. Here we go. Okay, we're recreating history. As I was preparing to leave, I asked if we could pose for a photograph and all these guys, all these professionals started flashing with their Look at this, their flash is going off, and I said, kind of haphazardly, looks to me like paparazzi. No, 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 no. They do not no, like no, no. the expression <laughs> paparazzi. These are professional photographers Thank you. continuing Thank you. to do their job. Right, fellas? Absolutely. Thumbs up for the professionals. Hold it there, don't move. Try that like, don't blink. Here we go. There you go. Oh! Visiting with Hewell Hauser is made possible through a generous grant from the Ralph M. Parsons Foundation.